Welcome to the Bible Study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today and for those who will listen in later on the archives as well. We pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, this week we are starting with the book of 1 Kings and we will be reading chapters 1 through 11. Before we do that, I'm going to open with our opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit in to lead us and guide us. Father God, we thank you for the ability to be together, to study your word. We ask your Holy Spirit to come lead us, guide us, direct us, open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart that we may be receptive to your word today. We know your word is faithful and true as you are faithful and true. You're a mighty, awesome, and powerful God, and we love you. We worship you. We adore you. We give you our praise, our honor, and all the glory goes to you. In the mighty, mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Well, the book of First Kings starts starts with David being in his old age and he is about ready to be gathered to the fathers um, and then we know that Solomon is his heir that is appointed to be the next king. So we're going to start out with chapter one, David in his old age. Now King David was old and advanced in years and although they covered him with clothes he could not get warm. Therefore his servants said to him, let a young woman be sought for my lord the king, and let her wait on the king, and be in his service. Let her lie, let her lie in your arms, that my lord the king may be warm. So they sought for a beautiful young woman throughout all the territory of Israel, and found Adashad the Shunammite, and brought her to the king. The young woman was very beautiful, and she was of service to the king and attended to him, but the king knew her not. Adonijah, Adonijah set himself up as king. Now Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. He wasn't appointed and he wasn't anointed. He just took it upon himself. And he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. His father had never at any time displeased him by asking, why have you done thus? And so he was also a very handsome man, and he was born next after Absalom. He conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruah, and with Abiathar, the priest, and they followed Adonijah and helped him. But Zadok, the priest, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan, the prophet, and Shimei, and Ray, and David's mighty men were not with Adonijah. Adonijah sacrificed sheep, oxen, and fattened cattle by the serpent stone, which is beside Enrogel. And he invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the royal officials of Judah, but he did not invite Nathan the prophet of Benaiah, or the mighty men, or Solomon his brother, Nathan and Bathsheba before David. Then Nathan said to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, Have you not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, has become king, and David our Lord does not know it. Now therefore come, let me give you advice that you may save your own life and the life of your son Solomon. Go in at once to King David and say to him, Did you not, my lord, the king, swear to your servant, saying, Solomon your son shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne? Why then is Adonijah king? Then while, then while you are still speaking with the king, I also will come in after you and confirm your words. So Bathsheba went to the king in his chamber. Now the king was very old, and Abishag the Shunammite was attending to the king. Bathsheba bowed and paid homage to the king, and the king said, What do you desire? She said to him, My lord, you swore to your servant that the Lord your God, saying, Solomon your son shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne. And now, Behold, Adonijah is king, although you, my lord, did, do not know it. He has sacrificed oxen, fattened cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the sons of the king, Abiathar the priest, and Joab the commander of the army, but Solomon your servant he has not invited. And now, my lord the king, 
The eyes of all Israel are on you to tell them who shall sit on the throne of my Lord the King after him. Otherwise it will come to pass when my Lord the King sleeps with his fathers that I and my son Solomon will be counted offenders. While she was still speaking with the king, Nathan the prophet came in, and they told the king, Here is Nathan the prophet. And when he came in before the king, he bowed before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord the king, Have you said Adonijah shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my th throne? For he has gone down this day and has sacrificed oxen, fattened cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the king's sons the commanders of the army, and Abiathar the priest, and behold, they are eating and drinking before him, and saying, Long live King Adonijah. But me, your servant, and Zadok the priest, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and your servant Solomon, he is not invited. Has this thing been brought about by my lord and the king, and you have not told your servants who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? Solomon is anointed king. Then King, King David answered, Call that she looked to me. So she came into the king's presence and stood before the king, and the king swore, saying, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my soul out of every adversity, as I swore to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, saying, Solomon, your son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne in my place, even so will I do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the ground and paid homage to the king and said, May my Lord King David live forever, King David said, Call to me Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. So they came before the king, and the king said to them, Take with you the servants of your Lord, and have Solomon my son ride on my own mule, and bring him down to Gihon. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet there anoint him king over Israel. Then blow the trumpet and say, Long live King Solomon. You shall then come up after him, and he shall come and sit on my throne, for he shall be king in my place. And I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada answered the king, Amen. May the Lord, the God of my Lord, the king, say so. As the Lord has been with my Lord the King, even so may he be with Solomon, and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord King David. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and the and the Chirithites, and the and the Pelethites went down and had Solomon ride on King David's mule, and brought him to Gihon. There Zadok the priest took the horn of oil from the tent, and anointed Solomon. Then they blew the trumpet, and all the people said, Long live King Solomon. And all the people went up after him, playing on pipes and rejoicing with great joy, so that the earth was split by their noise. Adonijah and all the guests who were with him heard it as they finished feasting. And when Joab heard the sound of the trumpet, he said, What does this uproar in the city mean? While he was still speaking, behold, Jonathan, the son of Abiathar, the priest came. And Adonijah just said, Come in, for you are a worthy man, and bring good news. Jonathan answered Adonijah, No, for our Lord King David has made Solomon king, and the king has sent with him Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and the Cherethites and the, and the Pelethites. And they had him ride on the king's mule. And Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king at Gihon. And they have gone up from there rejoicing so that the city is in an uproar. This is the noise that you have heard. Solomon sits on the royal throne. Moreover, the king's servants come to congratulate our Lord King David, saying, May your God make the name of Solomon more famous than yours and make the, his throne greater than your throne. And the king bowed himself on the bed. And the king also said, Blessed be the Lord. The God of Israel, who has granted someone to sit on my throne this day, my own eyes seeing it. Then all the guests of Adonijah trembled and rose, and each went his own way. And Adonijah feared Solomon, so he rose and went and took hold of the horns of the altar. Then it was told Solomon, Behold, Adonijah fears King Solomon, for behold, 
He has laid hold of the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Solomon swear to me first that he will not put his servant to death with a sword. And Solomon said, If he will show himself a worthy man, not one of his hairs shall fall to the earth, but if wickedness is found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent, and they brought him down from the altar. And he came and paid homage to King Solomon, and Solomon said to him, Go to your house. Chapter 2, David instructs, David's instructions to Solomon. When David's time to die drew near, he commanded Solomon, his son, saying, I'm about to go the way of all the earth. Be strong and show yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and keeping his statutes, his commandments, his rules, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do. And wherever you turn, that the Lord may establish his word that he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons pay close attention to their way to walk before me in faithfulness with all their heart and with all their soul, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, you also know what Joab, the son of Jeroiah, did to me, how he dealt with the two commanders of the armies of Israel, Abner the son of Ner and Amasa the son of Jether, whom he killed, avenging in time of peace for blood that had been shed in war, and putting the blood of war on the belt around his waist and on the sandals on his feet. Act therefore according to your wisdom, but do not let his gray head go down to Sheol in peace. I deal loyally with the sons of Barzilli, the Gileadite, and let them be among those who eat at your table, for with such loyalty they met me when I fled from Absalom, your brother. And there is also with you Shimei, the son of Gera, the Benjamite, Benjaminite from Baharum, who cursed me with the grievous curse on the day when I went to Mahanan. But when he came down to meet me at the Jordan, I swore to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put you to death with a sword. Now, therefore, do not hold him guiltless, for you are a wise man. You will know what you ought to do to him. And you shall bring his gray, there, gray head down with blood to shield. The death of David. Then David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. And the time that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of David with his father and his kingdom was firmly established. Solomon's reign established. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, and said, and she said, do you come peacefully? He said, peacefully. Then he said, I have something to say to you. She said, speak. He said, you know that the kingdom was mine and that all Israel fully expected me to reign. However, the kingdom has turned about and become my brother's, for it was his from the Lord. And now I have one request to make of you. Do not refuse me. She said to him, speak. And he said, please ask King Solomon. He will not refuse you to give me Abishag the Shunammite as my wife. Bathsheba said, very well, I will speak for you to the king. So Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak to him on behalf of Adonijah. And the king rose to meet her and bowed down to her. Then he sat on the throne and had a seat brought for the king's mother, and so she sat on his right. Then she said, I have one small request to make of you. Do not refuse me. And the king said to her, Make your request, my mother, for I will not refuse you. She said, Let Abishag the Shunammite be given to Adonijah, your brother, as his wife. King Solomon answered his mother, And why do you ask Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Ask for him the kingdom also, for he is my older brother, and on his side are Abiathar the priest and Job the son of Zeruah. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, saying, God, do so to me, and more also, if this word does not cost Adonijah his life. Now therefore, as the Lord lives, who has established me and placed me on the throne of David my father, and who has made me a house as he promised, Adonijah shall be put to death today. So King Solomon and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and he struck him down, and he died.
And to Abiathar the priest, the king said, go to Anatha, to your estate, for you deserve death. But I will not at this time put you to death, because you carried the ark of the Lord of Lord God before David my father, and because you shared in all my father's affliction. So Solomon expelled Abiathar from being priest to the Lord, thus fulfilling the word of the Lord that he had spoken concerning the house of Eli and Shiloh. When the news came to Joab, for Joab had supported Adonijah, although he had not supported Absalom, Joab fled to the tent of the Lord and caught hold of the horns of the altar. And when it was told King Solomon, Joab has fled to the tent of the Lord, and behold, he is beside the altar. Solomon sent Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, saying, Go strike him down. So Benaiah came to the tent of the Lord and said to him, The king commands come out. But he said, No, I will die here. Then Benaiah brought the king word again, saying, Then Joab then Joab said, and thus he answered, thinking replied the, the, the king replied to him, Do as he said, strike him down and bury him, and thus take away from me and from my father's house the guilt of the blood that Joab shed without cause. The Lord will bring back his bloody deeds on his own head because Without the knowledge of my father David, he attacked and killed with a sword two men more righteous and better than himself. Abner the son of Ner, commander of the army of Israel, and Amasa the son of Jether, commander of the army of Judah. So shall their blood come back on the head of Joab and on the head of the descendants forever. On the head of his descendants forever. But for David and for his descendants and for the house and for his throne, there shall be peace from the Lord forevermore. Then Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, went up and struck him down and put him to death. And he was buried in his own house in the wilderness. The king put Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, over the army in place of Joab. And the king put Zadok, the priest, in, in the place of Abiathar. Then the king sent and summoned Shimei, Shimei and said to him, Build yourself a house in Jerusalem and dwell there and do not go out from there to any place whatever. For on the day you go out and cross the brook Kidron, know for certain that you shall die. Your blood shall be on your own head. And Shimei said to the king, What you say is good, as my lord the king has said, so will your servant do. So Shimei lived in Jerusalem many days. But it happened at the end of three years that, the, that two of Shimei's servants ran away to Achish, son of Makkah, king of Gath. And when it was told, Shimei, behold, your servants are in Gath. Shimei arose and saddled a donkey and went to Gath to Achish to seek his and went to Gath to Achish to seek his servants. Shimei went and brought his servants from, from Gath. When Solomon was told Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and returned, the king sent and summoned Shimei and said to him, Did I not make you swear by the Lord and solemnly swear? And solemnly, solemnly warn you, saying, Know for certain that on the day you go out and go to any place, whatever, you shall die. And you said to me, What you say is good, I will obey. Why then have you not kept your oath to the Lord and the commandment with which I commanded you? The king also said to Shimei, You know in your own heart all, all the harm that you did to David, my father, so the Lord will bring back your harm on your own head, but King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. Then the king came in at Benai, the son of Jehoiada, and he went out and struck him down, and he died. So the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. Chapter 3 Solomon's Prayer for Wisdom Solomon made a marriage alliance with Pharaoh, with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had finished building his own house and the house of the Lord, and the wall around Jerusalem. The people were sacrificing at the high places, however, because no house had yet been built for the name of the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David, his father. Only he sacrificed and made offerings at the high places, and the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God 
said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness and righteousness and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his, his throne this day. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of David, my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this, your great people. It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or the life of your enemies, but you have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right behold i now do according to your word behold i give you a wise and discerning mind so that none like you has been before you and none like you shall arise after you i give you also what you have not asked both riches and honor so that no other king shall compare with you all your days and if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast for all his servants. Solomon's wisdom. Then two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. The one woman said, Oh, my Lord, this woman and I live in the same house, and I gave birth to a child while she was in the house. Then on the third day after I gave birth, this woman also gave birth, and we were alone. There was no one else with us in the house. Only we two were in the house, and this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while your servants slept. And laid him at her breast and laid her dead son at my breast and when i rose in the morning to nurse my child behold he was dead but when i looked at him closely in the morning behold he was not the child that i had born but the other, other woman said no the living child is mine and the dead child is yours the first said no the dead child is yours and the living child is mine thus they spoke before the king then the king said, the one says, this is my son that is alive and your son is dead. And the other says, no, but your son is dead and my son is the living one. And the king said, bring me a sword. So a sword was brought before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other. Then the woman whose son was alive said to the king, because her heart yearned for her son, oh, my Lord, give her the living child and by no means put him to death. But the other said, He shall be neither mine nor you, yours. Divide him. Then the king answered and said, Give the living child to the first woman, and by no means put him to death. She is his mother. And all Israel heard of the judgment that the king, that the king had rendered. And they stood in awe of the king because they perceived that the wisdom of God was in him to do justice. Well, the, the, the true mother did not want her child put to death. So she was willing to even give him up to the other woman as long as he wasn't put to death, that the child wasn't put to death. So that's how he, he was able to discern that. Solomon's officials, chapter four. King Solomon was king over all Israel, and these were his high officials, as Azira, the son of Zadok, was the priest. Elohareth and Ahijah, the sons of Shisha, were secretaries Jehoshaphat, the son of Ehud, Ehelud, I'm sorry, was recorder. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was in command of the army. Zadok and Abiathar were prince, were, were priests, and Azariah, the son of Nathan, was over the officers. Zebud, the son of Nathan, was priest and king's friend. 
Adashar was in charge of the palace, and Adoniram, the son of Abda, was in charge of the forced labor. Solomon had 12 officers over all Israel who provided food for the king and his household. Each man had to, to make provisions for one month in a year. These were their names, Ben-Hur in the hill country of Ephraim, Ben-Dekar in Mechaz, Shalbim, Beth, Beth Shemesh, and Elon Beth Hanan, Ben Hesed in Arabah, to him belonged Soko and all the land of, of Hepher, Ben Abinadab in all Napheth Dor. He had Tapheth, the daughter of Solomon, as his wife, Bana, the son of. Ahilud and Tanakh, Megiddo, and all Bethshin that is beside Zarethan below Jezreel, and from Bethshin to Abel Mehala, as far as the other side of Jokmin. Ben Giber in Ramah Gilead, he had the village of, Z of Jer, the son of Manasseh, which are in Gilead, and he had the region of Argob, which is in Bashan, 60 great cities with walls and bronze bars. Ahinadab, the son of Edo in Mahanam, Ahimaz in Naphtali, he had taken Basemath, the daughter of Solomon, as his wife, and Bana, the son of Hushai in, in Asher and Bila, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Harua in Issachar, Shimei, the son of Eli in Benjamin, Geber, the son of Uri in the land of Gilead, the country of Sihon, king of the Amorites and of Og, king of Bashan, and there was one governor who was over the land. Solomon's wealth and wisdom, Judah and Israel, were as many as the sand by the sea. They are, they, they were, they were as many, and, and that was what, what was also prophesied too in the past. They ate and drank and were happy. Solomon ruled over all the kingdoms from the Euphrates to the land of the Philistines and to the border of Egypt. They brought tribute and served Solomon all the days of his life. Now, mind you, this is a spoiler alert. This is the last king that would be able to, that was ruling both, both, uh, well, well, actually they were not divided at this point. So that divided, um, that actually ruled over all of Israel, all 12 tribes. But what you're going to see in the descendants, in, in, in his son, is there's going to be a split. The kingdom's going to split in two. But while Solomon is king, the, the kingdom is intact, all 12 tribes. Solomon's provision for one day was 30 30 cores of fine flour and 60 cores of meal, 10 fat oxen and 20 pasture-fed cattle, 100 sheep besides deer, gazelles, roebucks, and fattened fowl. For he had dominion over all the region west of the Euphrates, from Tifsa to Gaza, over all the kings west of the Euphrates, and he had peace on all sides around him. And Judah and Israel lived in safety from Dan even to Beersheba, Every man under his line and under his victory all the days of Solomon. Solomon also had 40,000 stalls of horses, horse chariots, and 12,000 horsemen. And those officers supplied provisions for King Solomon and for all who came to King Solomon's table, each one in his month. They let nothing be lacking. Barley also in straw for the horses and swift steeds, steeds they brought to the place where it was required each according to his duty. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding beyond measure and breadth of mind like the sand on the seashore, so that Solomon's wisdom surpassed the wisdom of all the people of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all other men, wiser than Ethan the Ezrahite, and Heman, Kalpal, and Darda, the sons of Mahol, and his fame was in all the surrounding nations. He also spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. He spoke of trees from cedar that is in, in the Lebanon and to the hyssop that grows out of the wall 
he spoke also of beasts and of birds and of reptiles and of fish and a people of all nations came to hear the wisdom of solomon and from all the kings of the earth who had heard the wisdom heard of his wisdom chapter five preparations for building the temple now hiram king of tyre sent his servants to solomon when he heard that they had anointed him king in place of his father for hiram hiram always loved david and solomon sent word to hiram you know that david my father could not build a house for the name of the lord his god because of the warfare with which his enemies surrounded him until the lord put them under the soles of his feet but now the lord my god has given me rest on every side there is neither adversary adversary nor misfortune and so i intend to build a house for the name of the lord my god as the lord said to david my father your son whom i will set on your throne in your place shall build a house for my name now therefore command that cedars of lebanon be cut for me and my servants will join your servants and i will pay you for your servants such wages as you set for you know that there is no one among us who knows how to cut timber like the sidonians and as soon as hiram heard the words of solomon he rejoiced greatly and said blessed be the lord this day who has given to david a wise son to be over this great people and hiram sent to solomon saying i have heard the message that you have sent to me and i am ready to do all you desire in the matter of cedar and cypress timber my servant shall bring it down to the sea from lebanon and i will make it into rafts to go by sea to the place you direct and i will have them broken up there and you shall receive it and you shall meet my wishes by providing food for my household so hiram supplied solomon with all the timber of cedar and cypress that he desired while solomon gave hiram twenty thousand cores of wheat as food for his household and thirty thousand cores of cores of beaten oil solomon gave this to hiram year by year and the lord gave solomon wisdom as he promised and there was peace between hiram and solomon and the two of them made a treaty king solomon drafted forced labor out of all israel and the drafted number and the drafted numbered thirty thousand men and he sent them to lebanon ten thousand a month in shifts they would be a month in lebanon and two months at home Adoniram was in charge of the draft. Solomon also had 70,000 burden bearers and 80,000 stone cutters in the hill country besides Solomon's 3,300 3, chief officers who were over the work, who had charge of the people who carried on the work. At the king's command, they quarried out great costly stones in order to lay the foundation of the house with the dressed stones. So Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders and the men of Gibel did the cutting and prepared this the timber and the stone to build the house chapter 6 Solomon builds the temple in the 480th year after the people of Israel came out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month of Ziv which is the second month he began to build the house of the Lord the house that King Solomon built for the for the Lord was 60 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. The vestibule in, in front of the nave of the house was 20 cubits long, equal to the width of the house, and 10 cubits deep in front of the house. And he made for the house windows with recessed frames. He also built a structure against the wall of the house, running around the wall of the house, both the nave and the inner sanctuary. And he made side chambers all around. The lowest story was five cubits broad, the middle one was six cubits broad, and the third one was seven cubits broad. For around the outside of the house, he made offsets on the wall in order that the supporting beams should not be inserted into the walls of the house. When the house was built, it was with stone prepared at the quarry so that neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron was heard in the house while it was being built. The entrance for the lowest story was on the south side of the house and one went up the upstairs in the middle story and from the middle story to the third so he built the house and finished it and he made the ceiling of the house of beams of, and planks of cedar he built the structure the structure against the whole house five cubits high and 
It was joined to the house with timbers of cedar. Now the word of the Lord came to Solomon concerning this house that you're building. If you will walk in my statutes and obey my rules and keep all my commandments and walk in them, then I will establish my word with you, which I spoke to David, your father. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built the house and finished it. He lined the walls of the house on the inside with boards of cedar. From the floors of the house to the walls and the ceiling, he covered them on the inside with wood, and he covered the floor of the house with boards of cypress. He built 20 cubits of the rear of the house with boards of cedar from the floor to the walls, and he built this within as an inner sanctuary as the most holy place. The house, that is, the nave in the front of the inner sanctuary was 40 cubits long. The cedar within the house was carved in the form of gourds and open flowers. All was cedar. No stone was seen. The inner sanctuary he prepared in the innermost part of the house to set there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. The inner sanctuary was 20 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 20 cubits high. And he overlaid it with pure gold. He also overlaid an altar of cedar, and Solomon overlaid the inside of the house with pure gold, and he drew chains of gold across in front of the inner sanctuary and overlaid it with gold. And he overlaid the whole house with gold until all the house was finished, also the whole altar that belonged to the inner sanctuary he overlaid with gold. In the inner sanctuary, he made two cher cherubim of olive wood, each ten cubits high, five cubits with a was the length of one wing of the cherub and the five cubits the other the length of the other wing of the cherub it was ten cubits from the tip of one wing to the tip of the other the other cherub also measured ten cubits both cherub had the same measure and the same form the height of one cherub was ten cubits and so was the other cherub he put the cherubim in the innermost part of the house and the wings of the cherubim were spread out so that a wing of one touched the one wall and a wing of the other cherub, cherub touched the other wall. Their other wings touched each other in the middle of the house. And he overlaid the cherubim with gold. Around all the walls of the house, he carved in great figures of cherubim and palm trees and open flowers in the inner and outer rooms. The floor of the house was he overlaid with gold in the inner and outer rooms. For the entrance to the inner sanctuary, he made doors of olive wood. The lintel and the doorposts were five-sided. He covered the two doors of olive wood with carvings of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers. He overlaid them with gold and spread gold in the cherubim and on the palm trees. So also he made for the entrance to the nave doorposts of olive wood in the form of a square and two doors of cypress wood. The two leaves of the one door were folding, and the two leaves of the other door were folding. On them he carved cherubim and palm trees and open flowers, and he overlaid them with gold evenly applied on the carved work. He built the inner court with three courses of cut stone and one course of cedar beams. In the fourth year, the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid in the month of this, and in the eleventh year, in the month of Bull which is the eighth month, the house was finished in all its part and according to all its specifications. He was seven years in building it. Chapter 7, Solomon built his palace. Solomon was building his own house 13 years, and he finished his entire house. He built the house of the forest of Lebanon. To it in its length was a hundred cubits, and its breadth was fifty cubits, and its height was thirty cubits, and it was built on four rows of cedar pillars with cedar beam, beams on the pillars. And it was covered with cedar above the chambers that were on the forty-five pillars, fifteen in each row. There were window frames in there in three rows, and window window opposite window in three tiers. All the doorways and windows had square frames and the window was opposite window in three tiers. And he made the hall of pillars. Its length was 50 cubits and its breadth 30 cubits. 
There was a porch in front with pillars and a canopy in front of him. And he made the hall of the throne where he was to pronounce judgment, even the hall of judgment. It was finished with cedar from floor to rafters. His own house where he was to dwell in, in the other court, back of the hall was of like workmanship. Solomon also made a house like this hall for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had taken in marriage. All these were made of costly stones cut according to measure, sawed with saws, back and forth, even from the foundation to the, to the coping and from the outside to the great court. The foundation was of costly stones, huge stones, stones of eight and ten cubits. And above were costly stones cut according to the measurement and, and cedar. The great court had three courses of cut stone, stones all around and a course of cedar beams so that so had the inner court of the house of the Lord and the vestibule of the house. The temple furnishings and King Solomon sent and brought Hiram from Tyre. He was the son of a widow of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyr, a worker in bronze. And he was full of wisdom, understanding, and skill for making any work in bronze. He came to King Solomon and did all his work. He cast two pillars of bronze. Eighteen cubits was the height of one pillar, and a line of twelve cubits measured its circumference. It was hollow, and its thickness was four fingers. The second pillar was the same. He also made two capitals of cast bronze to set on the tops of the pillars. The height of the one capital was five cubits, and the height of the other cubit, uh, capital was five cubits. There were lattices of checker work with a wreath of chain work for the capitals on the top of the pillars, a lattice for the one capital and a lattice for the other capital. Likewise, he made pomegranates in two rows around the one lattice work to cover the capital that was on the top of the pillar. And he did the same with the other capital. Now the capitals that were on the tops of the pillars in the vestibule were of lily work for cubits. The capitals were on the two pillars and also above the rounded projection which was beside the lattice work. There were 200 pomegranates in two rows all around, and so with the other capital. He set up the pillars at the vestibule view of the temple. <clears throat> he set up the pillars at the vestibule of the temple, and he set up the pillar on the south and called its name Jachin, and he set up the pillar on the north and called it its name Boaz. And on the tops of the pillars was lily work. Thus the works of the pillars were finished. I'm losing my voice here. I had to pause it there for a minute. So it probably indicates on the on the recording the, the little break that I just took. Then he made the sea of cast metal. It was round ten cubits from brim to brim and five cubits high, and a line of thirty cubits measured its circumference. Under its brim were gourds for ten cubits, compassing the sea all around. The gourds were in two rows cast with it when it was cast. He stood on twelve. Uh, it stood on twelve oxen, three facing north, three facing west, and three facing south, and three facing east. The sea was set on them, and all their rear parts were inward. Its thickness was a handbreadth, and its brim was made like the brim of a cup. Like the flower of a lily, it held 2,000 baths. He also made the 10 strands of bronze. Each strand was four cubits long, four cubits wide, and three cubits high. This was the construction of the, of the stands. And this was the construction of the stands. They had panels, and the panels were set in the frames. And on the panels, that were set in the frames were lions, oxen, and cherubim. So they had ten, he had ten stands that were that were also constructed of bronze. And these were the measurements um, that I had just read about the stands. On the frames, both both above and below the lions and the oxen, they there were wreaths of beveled work. Moreover, each stand had four bronze wheels and, and axles of bronze 
bronze and at the four corners were supports for a basin. The supports were cast with the wreaths at the side of each. Its opening was within a crown that projected upward one cubit. Its opening was round as a pedestal was made a cubit and a half deep. At its opening, there were carvings and its panels were square, not round. And the four wheels were underneath the panels. The axles of the wheels were of one piece with the stands and the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half. The wheels are made like a chariot wheel. Their axles, their rims, their spokes, and their hubs were all cast. There were four supports at the four corners of each stand. The supports were of one piece with the stands. And on the top of the stand, there was a round band, half a cubit high, and on the top of the stand, it's, it stays, and its panels were of one piece with it. And on the surface of its stays, and on its panels, he carved cherubim, lions, and palm trees, according to the space of each, and, and with wreaths all around. After this manner, he made the ten stands. All of them were cast alike of the same measure and of the same form. And he made ten basins of bronze. Each basin held forty baths. Each basin measured four cubits. And there was a basin for each of the ten stands. And he set the stands five on the south side of the house and five on the north side of the house. And he set the sea at the southeast corner of the house. Hiram also made the pots, the shovels, and the basins. So Hiram finished all the work that he did for King Solomon on the house of the Lord, the two pillars, the two bowls of the capitals that were on the tops of the pillars, and the two lattice works to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on the tops of the pillars, and the 400 pomegranates for the two lattice works, two rows of pomegranates for each lattice work to cover the two bowls of the capitals, that were on the pillars, the ten stands, and the ten basins on the stands, and the one sea, and the twelve oxen underneath the sea. Now the pots and the shovels and the basins, all these vessels in the house of the Lord, which Hiram made for King Solomon, were burnished bronze. In the plain of the, of the Jordan, the king cast them in the clay ground between Sukkot and Zarephan. And Solomon left all the vessels unweighed, because... There were so many of them, the weight of the bronze was not ascertained. So Solomon made all the vessels that were in the house of the Lord, the golden altar, the golden table for the bread of presents, the lampstand of pure gold, five on the south side and five on the north before the inner sanctuary, the flowers, the lamps and the tongues of gold, the cups, snuffers, basins, dishes for incense and fire pans of pure gold and the sockets of gold for the doors of the innermost part of the house the most holy place, and for the doors of the nave of the temple. Thus all the work that King Solomon did on the house of the Lord was finished, and Solomon brought in the things that David his father had dedicated, the silver, the gold, and the vessels, and stored them in the treasuries of the house of the Lord. Chapter 8, the ark is brought into the temple. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel, and all the heads of the tribes and the leaders of the houses of the people of Israel before King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant, covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled to King Solomon at the feast in the month Ethanim, which is the seventh month. Now, of course, we know these were the original biblical months and they had been changed. And all the elders of Israel came and the priests took up the ark and they brought up the ark of the Lord, the tent of meeting and all the holy vessels that were in the tent. The priests and the Levites brought them up and King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who had assembled before him were with him before the ark sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered. And the priests brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to, to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place underneath the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the ark so that the cherubim overshadowed the ark and its poles. And the poles were so long that the ends of the poles were seen from the holy place before the inner sanctuary. 
but they could not be seen from outside. And they are there to this day. There is nothing in the ark except the two tablets of stone that Moses put there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the people of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. And when the priests came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Solomon blesses the Lord. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in thick darkness. I have indeed built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell in forever. Then the king turned around and blessed all the assembly of Israel, while all the assembly of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who with his hand has fulfilled what he promised with his mouth to David my father, saying, Since the day that I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel in which to build a house, that my name might be there. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in my heart. Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, whereas it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build the house, but your son, who shall be born to you, shall build the house for my name. Now the Lord has fulfilled his promise that he made. For I have risen in the place of David, my father, and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and I have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. And there I have provided a place for the ark in which the covenant of the Lord that he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Solomon's Prayer of Dedication Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands towards heaven and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. You have kept with your servant David, my father, what you declared to him. You spoke with your mouth and with your hand have fulfilled it this day. Now therefore, O, o Lord God of Israel, keep for your servant David, my father, what you have promised him, saying, you shall not lack a, lack a man to sit before me on the throne of Israel, if only your sons pay close attention to their way to walk before me, as you have walked before me. Now therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you have spoken to your servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less this house that I have built. Yet have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his plea, O Lord my God, listening to the cry and to the prayer that your servant prays before you this day, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you have said my name shall be there, that you may listen to the prayer that your servant offers towards this place, and listen to the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place, and listen in heaven, your dwelling place, and when you, you hear, forgive. If a man sins against his neighbor and is made to take an oath and comes and swears his oath before your altar in this house, then hear in heaven and act and judge your servant, condemning the guilty by bringing his conduct on his own head and vindicating the righteous by rewarding him according to his righteousness. When your people Israel are defeated before the enemy because they have sinned against you, and if they turn again to you and acknowledge your name and pray and plead with you in this house, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them again to the land that you gave to their fathers. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, if they pray toward this place and acknowledge your name and turn from, away from their sin when you afflict them, then here in heaven and forgive us then your servant of your servants, your people Israel, when you teach them good, the good way in which they should walk and grant rain upon your land which you have given to your people as an inheritance. If there is famine in the land, if there is pestilence or blight, or mildew or locust or caterpillar. If their enemy besieges them in the land, 
at their gates, whatever plague, whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever plea is made by any man or by all your people, Israel, each, each knowing the affliction of his own heart and stretching out his hands towards his house and here in heaven your dwelling place and forgive an act and render to each whose heart you know according to all his ways. For you, you only know the hearts of all the children of mankind, that they may fear you all the days that they live in the land that you gave to our fathers. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people Israel comes from a far country for your name's sake, for they shall hear of your great name and your mighty hand and of your outstretched arm when he comes and prays towards his house here in heaven, your, your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you in order that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you as you do your people Israel, that they may know that this house that I have built is called by your name. If your people go out to battle against their enemy by whatever way you shall send them, and they pray to the Lord toward the city that you have chosen and the house that I have built for your name, then hear in heaven their prayer and their plea and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you are angry with them and give them to an enemy so that they are carried away captive to the land of the enemy far off or near. Yet if they turn their heart in the land to which they have been carried captive and repent and flee with you in the land of their captors, saying, We have sinned and have acted perversely and wickedly. If they repent with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies who carried them captive and prayed to you towards their land, which you gave to their fathers, the city that you have chosen, and the house that I have built for your name, and here in heaven, your dwelling place, their prayer and their plea, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you, and all their transgressions that they have committed against you, and grant them compassion in the sight of those who carry them captive, that they may have compassion on them, for they are your people and your heritage, which you brought out of Egypt. From the midst of the iron furnace, let your eyes be open to the plea of your servant and to the plea of your people Israel, giving ear to them whenever they call to you. For you separated them from among all the people, so the earth could be your heritage, as you declared through Moses, your servant, when you brought our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. Solomon's benediction. Now, as Solomon finished offering all this prayer and plea to the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, where he had knelt with his hands outstretched toward heaven. And he stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. Not one word has failed of all his good promise, which he spoke by Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. May he not leave us or forsake us, that he may incline our hearts to him to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his rules, which he commanded our fathers. Let these words of mine, with which I have pleaded before the Lord, be near to the Lord our God day and night, and may he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel, as each day requires, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God. There is no other. Let your heart, therefore, be wholly true to the Lord, our God walking in his statutes and keeping his commandments as at this day. Solomon sacrifices and the king and all Israel with him offer sacrifices before the Lord. Solomon offered as peace offerings to the Lord 22,000 22, oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. This same day, the king consecrated the middle of the court that was before for the house of the Lord, for there he offered the burnt offering and the grain offering and fat pieces, the peace offerings, because the bronze altar that was before the Lord was too small to receive the burnt offering and the grain offering and the fat pieces of the, off of the peace offerings. So Solomon held the feast at that time, and all Israel was with him a great assembly from Lebo Hamath to the brook of Egypt before the Lord our God seven days. On the eighth day, he sent the people away, and they blessed the king and went to their homes joyful and glad of heart. 
for all the goodness that the Lord has shown to David, his servant, and to Israel, his people. The Lord appears to Solomon. As soon as Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord in the king's house and all that Solomon desired to build, the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. And the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your plea, which you have made before me. I have consecrated this house that you have built by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. And as for you, if you will walk before me, as David your father walked with integrity of heart and uprightness, doing according to all that I have commanded you and keeping my statutes and my rules, then I will establish your royal throne in Israel, over Israel forever. As I promised David your father, saying, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel, but if you turn aside from following me, you or your children, and do not keep my commandments and my statutes, that I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, and I will cut off Israel from the land that I have given them, and the house that I have consecrated for my name I will cast out of my sight, and Israel will become a proverb and a byword among all peoples, and this house will become a heap of ruins. Everyone passing by it will be astonished and will hiss, and they will say, Why has the Lord done, done thus? to this land and to this house. Then they will say, because they abandoned the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore, the Lord has brought all this disaster on them. Solomon's other acts. At the end of 20 years in which Solomon had built the two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house, and Hiram's Hiram, king of Tyre, had supplied Solomon with cedar and cypress, timber and gold. As much as he desired, King Solomon gave to Hiram 20 cities in the land of Galilee. But when Hiram came from Tyre to see the cities that Solomon had given him, they did not please him. Therefore he said, What kind of cities are these that you have given me, my brother? So they are called the land of Kabul, Kabul K-A-K-A. I'm sorry, C-A-B-U-L, to this day. Hiram has sent to the king 120 talents of gold. And this is the, the account of the forced labor that King Solomon drafted to build the house of the Lord and his own house and the Milo and the wall of Jerusalem and the Hazor and the Megiddo and, and Megiddo and Gezer, the Pharaoh king of Egypt, has gone up and captured Gezer and burned it with fire and had killed the Canaanites who lived in the city and had given it a dowry to his daughter Solomon's wife. So Solomon rebuilt Gezer and Lower Beth Horon, and Bela and Tamar in the wilderness in the land of Judah, and all the store and all the store cities that Solomon had, and the cities that his chariots and the cities for his horsemen, and whatever Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion. All the people who were left of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites who were not of the people of Israel, their descendants who were left after them in the land, whom the people of Israel were unable to devote to destruction, these Solomon drafted to be slaves. And so they are to this day. But of the people of Israel, Solomon made no slaves. They were the soldiers. They were his officials, his commanders, his captains, his chariot commanders, and his horsemen. These were the chief officers who were over Solomon's work, 550 who had charge of the people who carried on the work. The Pharaoh's daughter went up from the city of David to her own house that Solomon had built for her. Then he built the millow. Three times a year Solomon used to offer up burnt offerings and peace offerings on the altar that he built to the Lord, making offerings with it before the Lord. So he finished the house. King Solomon built a fleet of ships at Azean Geber, which is near Elath on the shore of the Red Sea in the land of Edom. And Hiram sent the fleet, his servant seamen, who were familiar with the sea, together with the servants of Solomon. And they went to Ophir and brought from there gold, 420 talents, and they brought it to King Solomon.
Chapter 10, the Queen of Sheba. Now, when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue with camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon and she told him all that was in her mind, and Solomon answered all the questions. There was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the seating of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, the cupbearers, and his burnt offerings that he offered to the house of the Lord, there was no more breath in her. And she said to the king, the report was true that I heard in my own land of your words and of your wisdom, but I did not believe the reports until I came and my own eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told to me. Your wisdom and prosperity surpassed the report that I heard. Happy are, are your men, happy are your servants who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God who has delighted in you and set you on the throne of Israel because the Lord loved Israel forever. He has made you king that you may execute justice and righteousness. Then, the, then she gave the king 120 talents of gold and a very great quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again came such an abundance of spices as these that the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Moreover, the fleet of Hiram, which brought gold from Ophir, brought, brought from Ophir a very great amount of Almond wood and precious stones. And the king made of the almond, almond wood supports for the house of the Lord and for the king's house, and also lyres and harps for the singers. No such almond wood has come or been seen to this day. And King Solomon gave to the Queen of Sheba all that she desired, whatever she asked, besides what was given to her by the bounty of King Solomon. So she turned and went back to her own land with her servants. Solomon's great wealth. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 666 talents of gold. Besides that, which came from the explorers and from the business of the merchants and from all the kings of the West and from the governors of the land, King Solomon made 200 large shields of beaten gold. 600 shekels of gold went into each shield. And he made 300 shields of beaten gold, three minas of gold went into each shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. The king also made a great ivory throne and overlaid it with the finest gold. The throne had six steps, and the throne had a round top, and on each side of the seat were armrests, and two lions standing beside the armrests, while 12 lions stood there one on each end of a step on the six steps. The like of it was never made in any kingdom. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. Silver was not considered as anything in the days of Solomon for the king had a fleet of ships of, of Tarshish at sea with a fleet of Hiram. Once every three years, the fleets of, ship, of, of ships of Tarshish used to come bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. Then King Solomon excelled all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom. And the whole earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put into his mind. Every one of them brought his present articles of silver and gold, garments, myrrh, spices, horses, and mules so much year by year. And Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he stationed in the, chariot, in the chariot cities and with the king in Jerusalem. And the king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stone, and he made cedar as plentiful as a sycamore of the Shephadah. Shef Shef from Egypt and Q, I'm sorry, from, from the Shephelah 
and Solomon's Im Im import of horses was from Egypt and Q, and the king's traders received them from Q, and, and Q is spelled K-U-E in this Bible, at, at a price. A chariot could be imported from Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150, and so through the king's traders, they were exported to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Syria. Chapter 11. Solomon turns from the Lord. Now King Solomon, King Solomon loves so many foreign women, along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women, from the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the people of Israel, you shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they with you, for surely they will turn your heart after their gods. And Solomon this is where Solomon went bad. He actually started out really good, and this is where things went, went bad for Solomon. Solomon clung to these in love. He had 700 wives who were princesses and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For when Solomon was old, his wife turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not holy true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ash, Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not wholly follow the Lord as David his father had done. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites on the mountain east of Jerusalem. And so he did for all his foreign wives who made offerings and sacrifice to their gods. The Lord raises adversaries. There is. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he did not keep what the Lord commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, since this has been your practice, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes that I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom from you. I will give it to your servant. Yet for the sake of David, your father, I will not do it in your days, but I will tear it out of the hand of your son. However, I will not tear away all the kingdom, but I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of David, my servant, and for the sake of Jerusalem that I have chosen. And the Lord raised up an adversary against Solomon, Hadad, the Edomite. He was of the royal house in Edom. For when David was in Edom and, and Joab, the commander of the army, went up to bury the slain, he struck down every male in Edom for Joab and all Israel remained there six months until he had cut off every male in Edom. But Hadad fled to Egypt together with certain Edomites of his father's servants. Hadad was still being a little child. They set out from Midian and came to Paran and took men with them from Paran and came to Egypt to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who gave him a house and assigned him an allowance of food and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh so that he gave him in marriage the sister of his own wife, the sister of Tapanese, the queen, and the sister of Tapanese bore him, Ginnubath, his son, whom Tapanese weaned in Pharaoh's house. And Ginnubath was in Pharaoh's house among the sons of Pharaoh. But when Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers and that Joah, the commander of the army, was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, let me depart that I may go to my own country. But Pharaoh said to him, why have, you, why have you laughed with me that you are now seeking? Oh, I'm sorry. What have you laughed with me that you are now seeking to go to your own country? And he said to him, only let me depart. God also raised up an adversary to him, Reason, the son of Eliad, Eliada, who had fled from his master, Hadadezer, king of Zobah. And he gathered men about him and became leader of a marauding band after the killing by David. And they went to Damascus and lived there and made him king in Damascus. And he was 
an adversary of Israel all the days of Solomon, doing harm as Hadad did. And he loathed Israel and reigned over Syria. Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephraimite of Zerda, a servant of Solomon, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow, also lifted up his hand against the king. And this was the reason why he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built the mellow and closed up the breach of the city of David, his father. The man Jeroboam was able, and when Solomon saw that the young man was industrious, he gave him charge over all the forced labor of the house of Joseph. And at that time, when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, the prophet Ahijah, the, the Shilonite, found him on the road. Now Ahijah had dressed himself in a new garment, and the two of them were alone in the open country. Then Ahijah laid hold of the new garment that was on him, and tore it into twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself ten pieces. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I am about to tear the kingdom from the hand of Solomon, and will give you ten tribes, and he shall have one tribe for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city that I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because they have forsaken me and worship Ashereth, the goddess of the Sidonians. Chemosh, the god of Moab, and Milton, the god of the Ammonites. And they have not walked in my ways, doing what is right in my sight, and keeping my statutes and my rules, as David his father did. Nevertheless, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him ruler all the days of his life for the sake of David, my servant, whom I chose, who kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, and will give it to you ten tribes yet to his son i will give one tribe that david my servant may always have a lamp before me in jerusalem a city where i have chosen to put my name and i will take you and you shall reign over all that your soul desires and you shall be king over israel and if you will listen to all that i command you and will walk in my ways and do what is right in my eyes, by keeping my statutes and my commandments, as David my servant did, I will be with you and will build you a sure house, as I built for David, and I will give Israel to you, and I will afflict the offspring of David because of this, but not forever. Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam, but Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt to Shishat, Shish, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon and all that he did and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the acts of Solomon? And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was 40 years. And Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his place. Now, next week, we are going to uh, continue um, with chapter 12. That it, um, that's the end of our reading for this week, chapter 12 to 22. And you, this is now, we're going to begin with um, Solomon's son being king, and that is Rehoboam. So that is the end of our reading. We're going to do a quick recap. Now, I just want to mention um, we have, First and Second Kings, and and again, these were the double books. This is the second set. I had mentioned that um, when when we uh, began with uh, the the books of Samuel. Um, there's three three in the Old Testament. Um, first Samuel, Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, and then First and Second Chronicles. Now, the book of First and Second Kings were originally one book, just, just as was um, Samuel and Chronicles. These books are the second of a series of double books, and the books were compiled sometime after the capture of the Jews by the Babylonians in 587 BC. A probable date for the writing of First and Second Kings is between 560 and 538 BC. Now, there's, there's questions about the authorship of this book, and some scholars have suggested Ezra as the compiler and Isaiah as the editor, and others say that Jeremiah wrote First and Second Kings, but the evidence is not 
inclusive. Now, uh, Ahijah, who was a prophet, he he is credited for writing parts of Kings and Chronicles, and Edo the prophet, uh, the, the Levite seer, also wrote parts of Kings and Chronicles, the genealogies of Hebrew kings. Uh, he was he had actually done also Shemaiah the same parts of Kings and Chronicles and genealogies of Hebrew kings. Jehu. Um, the prophet wrote parts of Kings and Chronicles. And Jeremiah, who was a priest and a prophet, wrote uh, First Kings 1 through 11 and Kings chapter 24. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, First Kings um, uh, from chapter 1 to Second Kings uh, chapter 24. He's credited for that. But I, I, apparently there's bits and pieces where some of the other prophets were uh, contributors to both uh, Kings and Chronicles. And they were contributors in, in the genealogy. So there are also a number of scholars that believe the writer uh, was an unknown prophet or a Jewish captive in Babylon around 550 B.C. So um, the great Jewish scholar and historian Josephus ascribed the writings of 1 Kings and 2 Kings to the prophets. Uh, many, um, and, and I mentioned uh, Ahijah, Edo, Shemaiah, and Jehu. So, and also Jeremiah. In 1 Kings, we see the division of the United Kingdom of Saul beginning. Um, David and Solomon um, had the kingdoms intact. They had all 12 tribes intact. From the time of the division of the two kingdoms, um, we're, we're going we're gonna to see this in the second half of 1 Kings. Um, they will be known as is the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. Israel be, will become the northern kingdom with its capital as Samaria. And it will make up ten tribes other than Judah and Benjamin. And the kingdom of Judah consists of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, with Jerusalem as the cap capital city. And you will we will be getting into that next week. So um, the central message is division because of disobedience. As we see, Solomon fell away from the Lord. And he knew. But he had so many wives, and, and so he served their gods with them at times. The events covered in First Kings span a period of about 120 years. And this book records a turbulent experience of God's people and the death of King David around 971 B.C. to the reign of Jehoshaphat, the fourth king of the southern kingdom of Judah and the reign of Ahazia, the ninth king of the northern kingdom, around 853 B.C. So that'll be, that, that section will be next week. So um, the 40-year reign of King Solomon, we see, uh, occurred in 1 Kings, uh, chapter 1 to 11. And in the first half of the book, we see one united kingdom. The first 80 years of the divided kingdom, we're going to see in, in the second half of First Kings. The 40-year reign of King Solomon. Solomon was the last of the kings to rule over a united kingdom. Solomon called himself, you know, he was, he was but a child, but when he began to rule and he you know, he referred to himself as, as a child when he spoke to God. Solomon asked for prayer and wisdom when he became king. And God gave it to him. And then he, he gave him more than what he asked for because he wasn't being greedy. He didn't ask for riches or, or um, victory over enemies or anything like that or long life. He asked for wisdom to be able to, to judge and discern for the people. 
so God, God was pleased with that. It was very unselfish what he asked for. For first and second kings, uh, you know, uh, as we have already determined, were at one time an unbroken book, which was which formed a sequel to first and second Samuel. Because these books pick up from where first and second Samuel's loop off. So we see the glory of King Solomon's reign, his wealth, his wisdom, the great accomplishments of building the temple of his home. But the problem, and he started off wonderful, and then things went bad. Um, he had 700 wives and 300 concubines, and these wives were worshiping foreign gods. And that became a huge issue. The message of First Kings is as relevant today as it was then. God will, con God still controls human affairs, and the leader, person, or nation who responds to God and obeys Him will enjoy the benefits of a relationship with Him. But those who refuse God and rebel against Him, He will deal with, and not in a good way. Even though people are sinful, God is merciful and righteous. He forgives those who repent and return to him. So we will recap on this as well um, next, next week, um, the, the second part of this, the, the book of First Kings. Um, we see the wisdom of Solomon and how Solomon built the first temple. And then Solomon transgresses against God. God had warned him um, and also made promises to him. So Solomon had so much gold and silver, had thousands of horses, hundreds of wives and concubines. The results of Solomon's sins because of Solomon's many sins against God God, God was about to divide the kingdom after Solomon's death. Because of God's promise to David, he did not divide the kingdom while Solomon was still alive. And that is the end of this week's Bible study. Like I said, next week we will conclude um, the book of 1 Kings. We're going to open this up now to the altar call after I, I close this segment out in prayer. And then we will close out um, this week's Bible study. Father God, we thank you for your powerful work. We see how you bless Solomon um, very much so uh, with riches, with wisdom, with power. And all he needed to do was, was keep his vow to you. And as time went on, he did not. And the consequences, of course, we will see those consequences uh, come to fruition next week when, when, when we read on, because you had declared that you would tear the kingdom away from Solomon, but not while he was alive, that you would do it through his son for the sins of the father. We see that you know that it is important that it, that making vows are important, making covenants, making promises are very important to keep our word. You are God. We know that you are God that keeps promises. You keep your vows. You keep covenant. And we see time and time again that. Mankind has a problem with that, with, with keeping promises, with keeping covenant, with keeping vows. May we not repeat the mistakes of the past. Father God, help us to be strong and steadfast in you and learn from these past mistakes of the people years and years ago. 
that we may not repeat what they have done. We thank you, Father, for this powerful word. We thank you for hearing our prayer. We thank you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Salvation can only be achieved through Jesus who came and died for your sins. Salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences. But again, we, we, we heard about repentance, uh, how Solomon was praying that if the people would repent, that means turn away from wickedness and sin and come back to God and walk upright. So when you're seeking forgiveness, Jesus will forgive you. He died for your sins. He took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could indeed be redeemed of sin forever and reconciled to the Father. There's no one that could have done that. Um, prior to his coming, there was a sacrificial system that was in place, and it involved perfect animals, many or sheep, um, little lambs, and they had to be blemish-free, spotless, perfect, nothing internally or externally wrong with them. And they became the substitute for what was, what was actually the, the sentence for the people, the wages of sin or death. So God allowed that substitute, but it only covered sin. Now, when Jesus came, he was sinless, spotless, blameless, and he is the only one to have ever walked on this earth in that manner. So he's the only one that could be our substitute. And God allowed it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have everlasting life. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We cannot save ourselves. We were born into a fleshly body, a sinful nature. And Jesus is the only one that can cleanse us from everything. And we become new creations in him when we are born again and saved. The Gospel of John chapter 3 actually describes this all to uh, Nicodemus, a Pharisee of Jesus' time. He explained that one must be born again, born of the Spirit and, and, and water. You cannot uh, enter heaven in this fleshly body. It's impossible. The fleshly body will be is it's considered corrupted and the born again spirit born and born of the spirit body um, is incorruptible jesus died for us there's nothing that you could do to save yourself he did it all for us. Now it's a matter of us coming to him, asking for forgiveness of, of sin, known and unknown, keeping our heart clean, repenting, turning from our ways. That's what's up to us, accepting him as our Lord and Savior. Because he is the Lord and Savior. He is the only Messiah that has come. And he will be returning, not as a suffering servant, He'll be coming as the line of the tribe of Judah to rule and reign, for he is the king. He is the Lord. And no matter what, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus, Yeshua, is his Hebrew name, is Lord, is king. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. 
the other thing that Jesus did before he went to the cross, well, he didn't do it. Um, he, he was beaten by Roman soldiers. What he did is one of those stripes was, was bore for our illnesses and our afflictions. So we can say, by his stripes, I am healed. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is nothing you can do to enter heaven. There is all the money in the world can't buy your way to heaven because your money can't be spent in either heaven or hell. And that is the truth. So if you are ready, if you would like salvation, you would like to be saved, you can say this simple prayer with me right now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And I know and I believe that Savior is Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the Messiah, the only Messiah that was and is and will ever be forever. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins and for the sins of the whole world. I believe he was buried. I believe he rose again and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father now. And I believe he is coming again. I'm asking you, Jesus, to forgive me of anything that I've ever done. I'm ready to have my heart right with you. I'm ready I, I, I'm ready to make you Lord over my life because you are the Lord. I believe that with all my heart. I accept the gift of salvation that you're offering and the gift of eternal life with you. I thank you for that. I thank you that you made that so simple for me and that you died for me. You gave your life for mine. And I thank you. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me, and keep me close to you and, and walking in your ways for the rest of my life. I believe through you and you alone, Jesus, that I am saved, I am healed, I am born again, delivered and set free from sin and their consequences. And I believe that I'm healed and healthy of mind, body, and soul. In Jesus, Yeshua's precious, mighty, and awesome name. Amen. And if you said that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I will encourage you now to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Bible. I'm also going to encourage you to get a copy of the Bible and, and make a commitment to reading the Bible. Also, get involved in a Bible study. Get involved in some small groups. If, if the congregation that you're joining has them, uh, develop a prayer life. And develop a relationship with your now Heavenly Father, the creator of all things. When you are born again, he becomes your Heavenly Father. And he loves you. He doesn't care about your denomination he could care less about that. He wants relationship with you. So talk to him. He loves to hear his children speak to him. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm going to now close this out with the Aaronic blessing or the priestly blessing that is found on Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. This is when the Lord spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons. He gave them specific verbiage to speak over the children of Israel. And he said, and they shall put my name upon them, and uh, I will bless them. So when you're born again and saved, God puts his name on you. He seals you with his Holy Spirit. You are his. Amen. Amen. So this blessing is for the, the family of God. 
And in Hebrew, it goes like this: Ivarekaka Adonai veIshmareka, Yaea Adonai panavaleka vikuneka, Isa Adonai panavaleka veYasanuka Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. And it is still early enough in the week to say Shavua Tov. Have a good week. Come join us on Tuesday evening, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also, uh, we will be having an additional service this week for Rosh Kadesh. Uh, so we'll have it on the eve of the first day of Av. Again, God bless each and every one of you.